this is the stomach which has been removed from the cadaver this is the lower end of the esophagus this is the cardiac notch so from the cardiac notch you draw a horizontal line the portion of the stomach above this horizontal line is called as a fundus this is lesser curvature this is greater curvature so this is the pyloric end this is a cardiac orifice so at the lesser curvature where the vertical portion turns horizontal there is a slight constriction called incisura angularis so you draw another horizontal line from the incisura angularis to the greater curvature second one is from the cardiac notch to the greater curvature the portion of the stomach above first horizontal line is called as a fundus the portion between the first and the second horizontal line is called as a bodus body and the portion distal to the second horizontal line up to the pyloric sphincter is called as pylorus this pylorus is further divided by another horizontal line into a proximal pyloric antrum and a distal pyloric canal and distal most pyloric sphincter so first cardiac orifice pyloric orifice lesser curvature greater curvature fundus of the stomach body of the stomach pyloric antrum pyloric canal finally pyloric sphincter now for the interior of the stomach i have cut at the cardiac orifice up to pyloric orifice but i have not cut to open the pyloric sphincter yet so this is the interior of the stomach you can see numerous mucosal folds these mucosal folds are called as rugae when you closely observe with the hand lens you can see in small depressions or openings which are called as gastric pits these gastric pits are the sites where the gastric glands will open and pour their secretion close to the lesser curvature there will be two longitudinal mucosal folds which will approximate whenever the stomach contracts and form and form a tubular passage called as gastric canal of magenstras which will be extending from cardiac orifice to pyloric orifice separating this tubular passage which is temporarily formed by the approximation of two longitudinal folds close to the lesser curvature separating the main cavity of the stomach from this canal so whenever we eat and drink liquid the heavy food will go into the main part of the stomach whereas the fluid media will easily pass through this canal of magenstras and through pyloric sphincter will go into the duodenum so the brunt of the hot liquid or alcohol or spicy liquid whatever we drink will be all along the lesser curvature making it more prone for ulcer formation and this is the pyloric sphincter's duodenal aspect you can see clearly the sphincter with a narrow passage this is the first part of the duodenum that has been cut to show you the duodenal part of the pyloric sphincter now i will open up the stomach and show you the stomach portion of the pyloric sphincter this is the gastric portion of the pyloric sphincter so you can see the forceps coming through the stomach into the duodenum through the pyloric sphincter so the cardiac orifice does not have any sphincter it is only a physiological sphincter temporarily formed by the right crest of the diaphragm whenever abdomen pressure increases occluding this orifice temporarily so that stomach contents does not enter into the duodenum i mean into that esophagus but in the case of pyloric orifice there is a well formed sphincter which will close it is a one way valve allowing only the stomach contents to enter into the duodenum so along the greater curvature there are three peritoneal folds that are attached the superior aspect of the fundus will be attached to the under surface of diaphragm the gastrophrenic ligament similarly the lateral portion of the fundus will be attached to the spleen by gastrosplenic ligament the rest of the greater curvature will give attachment to a double layered peritoneal fold called as greater omentum 
the vessels in between the layers of great momentum or right and left gastroepiploic vessels the vessels in the gastrosplenic ligament are short gastric vessels there are no vessels in the gastrophrenic ligament then along the lesser curvature we have the lesser momentum extending between the stomach and the liver right and left gastric vessels are the contents of the lesser momentum along with anterior and posterior vagal trunks and their branches called nerve of letargic this is stomach in situ this is the lesser curvature and this is the lesser momentum along the lesser curvature stretching between the stomach and the liver this is liver in situ you can see the spleen along the greater curvature of the stomach and that is gastrosplenic ligament stretching between spleen and the stomach this is greater momentum the first layer will come from anterior superior surface of the stomach bends and forms a fourth layer the fourth layer will cover the transverse colon forms the second layer of transverse mesocolon then forms a mesentery of the intestines and then go to the sigmoid colon and finally enters into the pelvis so you can see lesser momentum here clearly stretching from the lesser curvature of the stomach to the liver now for the anterior superior surface of the relations of the stomach anterior superior surface is related to the left lobe of the liver the quadrate lobe of the liver this is a relationship here it is related to the costal margin so you can see here there is a small portion of stomach here which is related only to anterior abdominal wall between the left lobe of the liver and then the spleen and the transverse colon so this portion of the stomach that is related directly to the anterior abdominal wall is a gastric triangle through which only feeding gastrostomy is done in patients with esophageal atresia or cancer now for the posterior relationship of the stomach or stomach bed structures for that we have to cut open the greater omentum and expose the interior or the structures present on the posterior superior posterior inferior surface of the stomach